Of course, every course starts with the definition, okay? Uh, and you have the general definition of physiology. Uh, you have seen many times how the body works, okay? It's the scientific study, okay, using methods from different sciences, from mathematics, from physics, from chemistry, using methods that helps us, that help us understand how the human body works, how the body systems work, how they are controlled, Okay, we can use uh, or study physiology at different levels of organization from the cellular, molecular, tissue, organ, systemic level to the organism. And then we typically shouldn't stop there because uh, we live in an environment, we live in a family, we live in a house. Okay, we have a history, we have a past, we, have, we are worried about things. And all these things affect our health. Okay, so hopefully you can integrate what you learn in physiology with other things that are not typically studied when we study human physiology. Okay, we try to understand normal functions and how they interact to maintain homeostasis. Now, clinical physiology, okay, what we are actually studying. Okay. If you want, clinical physiology can be easier than the physiology that you have studied before. Okay, in the, when you study just physiology, okay, there are many formulas, many graphs that you have to interpret. Okay, you have to sometimes calculate things, you have to do experiments, maybe virtual or real experiments, okay, and understand things that are more or belong more into the physics or mathematics. Okay, here we are gonna understand all those things, but how they apply to human health and how they can be applied to understand disease. It's too loud. Okay, so the purpose of this course is to prepare you for understanding other uh, subjects in the program, basically clinical medicine, pharmacology, and also understand when you start, for example, interviewing a patient, ordering diagnostic tests, interpreting them, and prescribing medications, understand why you are doing that. Okay, if a patient has a symptom or has different clinical signs, it's important to understand the basis of that, why that is happening, why my patient is manifesting jaundice or fever or rash or different things. Okay, so this is like, a, it's, a, it's a foundational science, but it's like a bridge. Okay, so you can understand easier, more easily other, uh, other subjects. Okay, you are going to understand, for example, the use of the electrocardiogram, use of x-rays, spirometry, okay, blood pressure measurements, And this uh, physiology also will prepare you to understand the path of physiology, okay, which is uh, what happens in the body when the physiological mechanisms don't work properly. Okay, and even sometimes uh, are the ones who produce the problem in our health. Okay, normally when there is any abnormality in the body, there are mechanisms that try to fix that. Okay, sometimes these mechanisms are too weak or too strong. Okay, and then the mechanisms that are trying to reestablish everything to normal are the ones who actually are producing the problem. And I'm gonna give you one example. You have studied probably that when the blood pressure drops, okay, we have baroreceptors that sense that low blood pressure, they send signals to activate the sympathetic nervous system, okay, we activate the renin and angiotensin aldosterone system, all this tries to take the blood pressure back to normal. So that is a good thing, you know? When we stand from a chair very quickly, the blood pressure drops because the blood pulls down because of the gravity, and that mechanism helps to increase the blood pressure so we don't feel dizzy. That's great. But what happens if someone has an overactive mechanism, okay, that tries to reestablish the blood pressure to normal, and those chemicals that are produced are constantly being produced. 
for example, aldosterone, angiotensin II, then we have to use medications to block that. And that's the reason why we use angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, because we need to slow down the mechanisms that normally help increase the blood pressure because they are increasing the blood pressure all the, all the time. Okay, so these mechanisms that normally help the body sometimes are the ones who produce the problem. In physiology, well, as I told you before, is this course or what, we, we, what you are going to be studying here is gonna help you to understand many other subjects. It's gonna make easier for you understanding clinical medicine, physical diagnosis, pharmacology, all the things that you're gonna be studying in the future.